so I thought we'd do a uh, video just to show you what we actually do before we actually go ahead and make a, make a start on the chain. We like to do a few health checks on these just to make sure that we're not actually wasting our time on um, doing the tech, doing the chains, charging a lot of money just to um, for the car to have other issues. So one of the first ones, obviously, is just a listening to what it sounds like when it starts. So we'll do that now. Now I could hear a couple of noises there. I could hear the chain rattle and you could hear that get a little bit quieter as the tensioner filled up with oil. I could also hear what sounded like a heat shield rattle, which to be fair, I did hear when I pulled it in. Um, little turbo one, but I think that was normal. It was a little bit difficult to tell over the, the noise of the engine, but it sounded pretty even when it starts. Um, so now one of the second tests we do is just doing a full coat scan. So ignition on, and we're using the Think Car for this. Now we have actually invested in the genuine Land Rover tools, um, but you have to pay to use them. You can get a yearly subscription. We have, we are, we aren't using it enough to warrant that at this time. So we haven't got a year's subscription on it, but it does cost per hour to use. Um, it's going to keep ding dinging unless I shut this door. Um, so yeah, we. We haven't invested in a year subscription yet because we don't think it's worth it because to be honest with you these aftermarket tools do so much especially this one does seem to do so much on land rovers that um it's easier to grab grab these sometimes it's easier to actually do it on these and one of the biggest things is the genuine tool has to be on the internet and when we're outside the signal is not great so uh, and the in the phone signal around here is so bad that um it actually isn't worth our time trying to use our internet for for doing the doing whatever we need to do on the computer if that makes sense i'm waffling a little bit but we're flying through the uh, code scan and i strongly suspect someone's cleared the code on this because there are none but the customer did give us an aa printout and it had a camshaft fault code and also a knock sensor fault code so there's every chance that that may come back um, I think it was actually knock sensor, the communication with the knock sensor, which is usually the knock sensor. Um, but we'll see. But no, this one is looking pretty good so far. There's only two modules in red so far. It's nearly finished, so I might as well just let it go. And then we'll produce a report and press OK and it will generate a report um, with everything on it. And then I'll email it to myself so we've got an email copy, which is quite handy. And we can always send these to you um, if you want them. Now, the only fault codes are image processing control module, control module, fault. We'd have to look into that, um, historic anyway. And then we've got two in the HVAC. One is the cabin temperature sensor fan and the windshield misting sensor both of them are intermittent but potentially needs a windscreen and a temperature sensor i would imagine somewhere around the interior fan that would be but again without looking up the codes i wouldn't know so we're going to move on to the next test um now i don't know if we can do this on here what we're going to do we're going to do a relative compression test I'm sure somewhere in these you can actually um, you can do a compression test on there, but we don't need to. We'll take you back under the bonnet. <clears throat> so this is a really simple test, basically. Um, so we're going to disconnect the injectors so that the car does not start. I'm going to grab a screwdriver. And pop these little red tabs up. A 
bit of rust around this fuel filter housing, so I've seen these. We've seen these crack before, so we will check. It looks okay, but we'll check it. And now we'll get the laptop out and set it up. I'll stop the video and set it up. Rip. Okay. True drawing, but this here is a cylinder and the piston in the cylinder, and this is the battery on the vehicle and our oscilloscope. And what a relative compression tester does, all it is measuring is it's measuring battery voltage. As this piston moves up when you're cranking, as it moves up, it's building up compression. And that in turn slows the starter motor down, which means that the battery current draw or the draw on the starter motor it pulls a higher current which puts the voltage down and this little device here is just a really really fast multimeter and it will measure the cylinder uh, it will measure uh, you you set how many cylinders it's got so in this case four and it will measure the current you know in the in the revolution the, it knows there's four cylinders so it's looking for four peak current draws and it will give you a hundred percent it'll always give you a hundred percent on one of them that it thinks is the best it, they're not in order so we don't know which one cylinder so we, we're not like saying it's four three two one or anything it's that it can be random but it, the hundred the biggest compression will always give it a hundred percent and then the, the following ones will give you the percentage you can see on the screen um the reason it's we find it so important is because it's such a simple test i mean you've literally got one lead there and two leads there and your laptop and your and you're doing that test we had two jaguars in in a week and both of them had low compression i'm going to show one video now and you can actually hear it when it's cranking you can hear it's got low compression the other one you could hear you couldn't hear it at all um but it was down to i think 84 percent uh you, you yeah you couldn't really hear it when it's starting but doing this compression test we discovered that it actually needed an engine and the customer is actually just going to get rid of the car rather than spending the money on a timing chain so we think this is quite an important test and we do it every time we've got one in for major work yeah And the next step is just simply to get it up in the air and give it a good check over. Uh, you have to excuse the uh, decorator's pole that's just holding the bonnet open because it's the uh, the struts have gone a bit weak on this one. I've had a quick nose underneath that, the underneath the bonnet, couldn't see any real leaks or anything. So one of the first checks we're going to do is have a look in the kit for the exhaust I know fingers in there see if they come out black which they haven't so that's a really good sign that the DPF is not cracked because that is quite common and then it's just giving the whole car a quick once over it looks like they're getting a little bit low the back and the inner discs are starting to get a bit licked and corroded and same for the other side Mind you, they've still got a bit of meat left on the pads. Um, tires, wheels. I mean, I'm literally just giving this a quick visual check. These will get, this will get a proper health check, but this is just kind of our initial look over. Again, out a lip on the discs a little bit, but the pads are fine. Bushes don't look too horrendous. Just checking a brief play. Obviously, this is going to be pulled apart, so we're not going too in depth. Um, it's one of the rattles I heard, I guarantee, and I haven't, I promise you I haven't done this yet, but I guarantee when I hit this exhaust. Rattling. Rattling heat shield. Something is rattling in there anyway. That's one of the rattles that you can hear. Or I could hear when I started it. Oh, what's causing it? It looks like it's been off because they're not central, so maybe it's just a case of. Yep, 
definitely tank done on that heat shield, so that'll be addressed. Taking a look up there, that turbo boost pipe is very, very common. They were on back order for a while, and that is leaking. Um, that blue sensor looks like it's already had a wire and repair done. That's common. And then we'll get this undershield off and see if we can see anything underneath. Um, with that under tray off, we can take a look. Got a diff leak, or sorry, not diff, power power transfer unit leak. Seal is very, very common. That's some of what was on the under tray. Looks like it's leaking a little bit from here as well, which is unusual. That, that seal, but that can be changed, not a problem. These are super common. There's a sleeve kit in there, which we can show you. But to be honest with you, overall, it looks pretty good other than I've just spotted an antifreeze leak so I presume that is the thermos that still seals leaking it's most we're quite common um, and he's not here but he would tell you more about that than I would um, so yeah that I'm guessing we'll need addressing before it gets worse this side looks all right, and then it's just a case of getting up and seeing if we can see any other oil leaks. And to be honest with you, no, he looks like pretty good. So this overall is pretty good, time and chain. Um, BPF looks good. I'm just going to grab a bar and just bar this front suspension up a little bit. Like I could say, this will get done with flavor. You can hear that. It's definitely something rattling in that heat shield. Pretty solid. Oh. That's tight. That's tight. And no, they all look pretty good. So the sort of general result on this would be uh, heat shield. Sorry, yeah, heat shield rail, um, time and chain, thermostat seal, and the PTU sleeves. Now they do get that does get taken off pretty much when you're done running another half hour spraying some slit seals in there for that. So that's that. Um, we don't have to take the BPF off, but that shield will, will definitely try and find out what is wrong with that. Now there are two pipes. Ah, there's another rattle that I've just found. So it's very common for these BPF pressures pipes, the bracket breaks away. So that will be one of the rattles. That should be pretty solid. And yeah, so there's that. That's really bothering me now to find out what is actually causing that. But we'll get to the bottom of it and come in. So yeah, sorry, getting a bit distracted, but on this one, we're, we're gonna recommend thermostat, time and chain, this seals, um, Probably an oil change on that as well. And the heat shield rail. So other than that, it all looks pretty good. It did have a knock sensor code. But it's there. The knock sensor goes, the electronic control unit goes behind, but that isn't actually active at the moment. But we'll have to see if that comes in, but we should mention that to the customer because they're not the cheapest thing. Do me in that heat shield. Uh, that's not the cheapest thing to replace. And it's also got slight cracked flex seeds, which is quite common. Although this isn't actually that bad at the moment, but yeah, so uh, sorry for boring you to death, but just it sort of get showing you what we're looking at just with some of the initial bigger things. Because if those tail pipes are cracked, then that's another 1200 quid in a DPF, etc. So it's not, you know, then we've got to start talking to the customer about what it's worth it. But I like to, we'll like to do a whole sort of like a mini MOT service check kind of thing when we actually get involved in this one, but it doesn't look too bad, and I think it would be definitely worth repairing.